There's so much conflicting information out there about the best diet for hemochromatosis. So where should you even start? Well, when you are first learning about the changes you need to make to your diet in hemochromatosis, one of the most essential lessons is to understand the difference between heme iron and non-heme iron. Now, this is a very important topic, albeit a potentially confusing one. So let's make heme and non-heme iron make sense, shall we? Hello, I am Dr. Eric Lewis, and welcome to Hemochromatosis Health. Along with my wife, Dr. Christina, we are the only doctors on the internet devoted to the unique needs of people with hemochromatosis and iron overload. So in hemochromatosis, which food should you pay the most attention to include or exclude from your diet? Are certain categories of food going to be more potentially problematic than others? Let's discover how to make the best dietary choices when you have hemochromatosis. And specifically, let's learn about one of the most basic, fundamental concepts for iron in our foods. What exactly do we mean when we say heme iron or non-heme iron? By the end of this video, you'll have this concept down pat, as we will share with you a list of the top 10 heme iron foods and a list of the top 10 non-heme iron foods. So be sure to stick around. So to start, there are two kinds of naturally occurring iron in foods that are absorbed and handled differently by our bodies. The two forms of dietary iron are heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme iron is found only in meat, poultry, seafood, and fish. So heme iron is the type of iron that comes from animal proteins in our diet. Non-heme iron, by contrast, is found in plant-based foods like grains, beans, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. But don't make the mistake of assuming it's only in plants. Non-heme iron is also found in animal products, such as eggs or milk or dairy, and non-heme iron comprises more than half the iron contained in animal meat. Another way to think about heme versus non-heme is by categories of foods. Animal meat is a combination of heme and non-heme. Dairy and eggs are non-heme, and plant foods are non-heme only. Does this all make sense so far? Good. Now, the way our body absorbs these two types of iron is very different. Heme iron is more readily, easily absorbed and is therefore a large source of dietary iron for people both with and without hemochromatosis. Non-heme iron is usually less readily absorbed than heme iron. Especially in people without hemochromatosis, non-heme iron tends not to be a big source of dietary iron. Now, this of course will be different in those of us with hemochromatosis, which I'll explain more in a minute. It is important to note that heme iron comprises only 40 to 45% of the iron in meat. The rest of the iron contained in meat is actually this non-heme form, roughly 55 to 60%. So when you see the milligrams of iron listed for a portion of meat, for simplicity's sake, approximately half of that is heme and the other half is non-heme. Now, this becomes important to understand when thinking about substances that help block iron absorption, as most work only to block non-heme iron. So you may be wondering, why does any of this matter? Well, it matters because our bodies absorb the iron from animal-based protein better than the iron from plant-based protein. This is one reason why a vegetarian without hemochromatosis is more at risk of developing iron deficiency anemia than people who eat meat. The exclusively non-heme iron found in plants isn't as available to our bodies as heme iron is. People who eat meat are getting both non-heme and heme iron while vegetarians get only non-heme, even if they include dairy and eggs. The absorption of non-heme iron in people without hemochromatosis is approximately 5 to 12% of the iron listed on the nutritional label. This is because during digestion, the body has to alter non-heme iron to take it in fully. Heme iron is a different story. In someone without hemochromatosis, 20 to 30% of the heme iron they consume is absorbed from a meal. In hemochromatosis, the absorption of heme iron is up to four times greater, meaning 80 to 100% of heme iron can be absorbed. The Iron Disorders Institute provides a nice real-world example of how this may work. 
So say you eat a four ounce hamburger that contains 1.2 milligrams of heme iron. Someone with normal iron absorption might only absorb 0.3 milligrams of heme iron from that burger, but someone with hemochromatosis might absorb the full 1.2 milligrams. So take that a step further and imagine meal after meal, day after day, year after year. If every hamburger consumed leads to this amount of iron absorption increase, then it can really, really add up. This variation between what a food label states and what our body actually absorbs makes questions like how many milligrams of iron should I eat such an impossible question to answer. As you're maybe starting to realize, it's just not that simple. One study that looked at the, how the foods we eat with an iron-rich meal impact how our body absorbed iron discovered that heme iron is well absorbed and relatively little affected by other foods eaten in the same meal. On the other hand, the absorption of non-heme iron, the major dietary pool, is greatly influenced by meal composition. Non-heme iron, the iron found in both plant and animal foods, is typically viewed as less threatening and less important for a hemochromatosis diet. This very same iron is the one we have the most ability to affect and change by diet. But when I say affect, I don't just mean in a good way. The absorption of non-heme iron can be dramatically increased by unknowingly combining it with foods that make its effect worse for our situation. For example, certain nutrients may increase non-heme iron absorption from seemingly benign foods such as rice and corn two to three fold, which is the last thing that we want. But on the other hand, that same knowledge can be used to help reduce the iron absorbed from our meals. We should be very conscientious about including the nutrients that impair non-heme iron absorption as part of our overall diet. So here we are, ready and willing to learn about the biggest source of heme iron in the diet. Let's go through the top 10 heme iron foods based on the milligrams of iron per a three ounce serving. Number one, clams. Number two, liverwurst. Number three, chicken liver. Number four, oysters. Number five, beef liver. Number six, mussels. Number seven, venison. Number eight, extra lean ground beef. Number nine, sardines. Number 10, lamb chop. One thing I want to point out is that these high levels of irons were found in just a three ounce portion size, which may be a relatively small amount for a person. Most meals with these foods will contain much larger portions and therefore much larger amounts of iron. For a more general sense, the following is a highest to lowest list of foods that typically have a high amount of heme iron. Beef and chicken liver, oysters, clams, mollusks, mussels, beef, canned sardines, turkey, chicken, fish such as halibut, haddock, salmon or tuna, ham, and veal. Now on to the top 10 non-heme foods, this time with the serving size shown for each food. The top 10 dietary sources of non-heme iron or plant-based foods include number one, soybeans, number two, blackstrap molasses, Number three, lentils. Number four, cooked spinach. Number five, tofu. Number six, enriched bagel. Number seven, cooked chickpeas. Number eight, tempeh. Number nine, lima beans. Number 10, black-eyed peas. Again, for a more general sense, the following is a highest to lowest list of foods that typically have a high amount of non-heme iron. Cooked spinach, and note when raw, the iron in spinach is blocked by oxalates. Seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, firm tofu, beans and lentils such as chickpeas or garbanzo beans, white beans, red kidney beans, soybeans, black beans, fortified breakfast cereals. For example, total cereal has 18 milligrams of iron per cup. Baked potato with skin, blackstrap molasses, prune juice, dried fruit such as raisins and apricots, and nuts like cashews, almonds, and pistachios. So there you have it. We've covered the top 10 heme iron containing foods, as well as the top 10 non heme iron containing foods in the diet. Now, another important question to ask is, do I have to avoid all of these foods in my diet forever and ever? No, absolutely not. We all have to eat and many nutritious foods contain iron in them, at least in a small portion. 
Therefore, it's important to understand heme iron versus non-heme iron so we can make the best choices for our health. Deciding what changes to make in your diet depends on many factors, including your iron and ferritin levels, your genetics, your overall health, and many other personal and familial factors. From our perspective, we value moderation for most individuals. Now, if you have a severe case of iron overload, then you may wish to take these lists very seriously on your road to reducing iron. But overall, we like to encourage balance in our nutrition between reducing dietary iron intake and also maintaining a healthy, well-rounded diet. So what's next? Now that you have one of the most important and foundational topics down, you may wish to further your dietary understanding for hemochromatosis. Diet and nutrition for lowering iron is our specialty, so be sure to check out the other videos from our YouTube channel. Additionally, we have a ton of iron-related nutritional information available on our website, hemochromatosishelp.com. While you are there on our site, be sure to sign up for our free newsletter, where we share a ton of articles on food and nutrition for reducing high iron. And if you really want to take your understanding of the best diet for hemochromatosis to that next level, my wife and I have both written books that are full of helpful information but they're also easy to follow along and understand. We cover all you need to know about diet and cooking for hemochromatosis.